All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this GVDA GD166B. It's an auto ranging multimeter with a clamp so you can measure current uh, through a cable, which is pretty handy. I did want to say that the folks from GVDA contacted me and asked me if I would like to review this product. Of course, I said yes, so they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. Now, if you're the type of person who's triggered by something like that, you might want to go check out some cat videos. All right, so let's take a look and see what we have here. Uh, it looks like they use this box for different meters, and then they specify which one with this sticker. And on the back, uh, you might be able to pause that and take a look if you're really interested, are some specifications, and then it has a table that includes all three of their clamp meters. Let's see what, uh, what we got going on inside. Now, I haven't opened this yet, so we could share this moment together. And it looks like it comes in this nice very handy beautiful case so let's go ahead and open this up we have a user manual and uh, this meter is a little on the small side so I guess that makes it portable so here's the meter we're gonna go through all the different functions on this and uh, I wonder if it has batteries inside I bet it does Maybe it doesn't. All right, and then we have a thermal couple, and this is for measuring temperature. And uh, we'll test that out. And then it comes with these probes. And uh, let's just go ahead and tear these babies open. All right, these probes come with these shrouds or shields, which are nice because if you're inside of an electronic component poking around, you wanna use something like this so you don't, uh, so you don't short out anything. And um, these are definitely not silicon leads. This feels like uh, maybe it's PVC or something like that, but you can see the memory in here. And then it has these uh, safety caps in here with the regular banana jacks. You can see that. Let's just take a quick look at the meter. Um, we'll bust this open and see if there's batteries inside. Uh, I was expecting there would be, but uh, what do I know? And there are no batteries, so I'm going to have to go dig some up, and we'll come right back. All right, we're back, and we got some Duracells. Let's go ahead and put these babies in here. And it looks like the meter came on. And a long press turns that off. And a quick press turns it on. And it looks like it's going through some sort of calibration routine. Um, this is the part that everybody is uh, waiting for. Voila, it's off. All right, let's take a look at this multimeter. And right now you can see that it is in an auto ranging configuration. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I wanna set this for amps or current. And I do that by hitting the function auto button. And now it's locked there. It's also given us a temperature rating right now. Um, one of the things I wanted to show was in the instruction manual for current, it says that it can measure DC current down to 0.01 amps at a 60 amp setting at a 600 amp setting to 0.1 plus or minus 2% and the five last digits uh, or plus five on the last last digit. Here is AC current and it looks like the readings are similar. So let's go ahead and test current first. And what we're going to do is we're going to test the clamp meter for DC. And what I have for this is I have this ampere time, uh, lithium iron battery that we are going to charge with my um, with my power supply over here. All right, so here it is clamped on to the positive line and we are getting a reading here of 1.6 amps, which seems to be in concert with the MFJ power supply that I'm using to charge the battery. So it looks like this particular function works. Let's go ahead and disconnect everything, clean this up and do some other testing. Okay, so we've set this to voltage testing now, and it is saying DC. So we're going to use this DMM check plus, and I want to make sure that it's set to DC, and it is. And then we are going to locate the voltage standards, and they are here. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to check this. 
and we should be getting about 5 volts. There we go. And what we want to do now is we want to hit the select button to switch to AC and we're going to go ahead and we're going to change this to AC and then we're going to check it again. And the standard is 4.999 and that is within spec. So we're good there. Let's go ahead and move over to ohms or resistance. Hopefully you can see that okay on the on the display. We've now moved over to ohms. And this should be 100 ohms. And we have 100.1. This should be 1000 or a kilo ohm. We have 0.999, which is what the calibration standard, the calibration sheet says. This should be 10K, 9.98. And this should be 100K. And we have 99.8. So we're happy there. Now, this also can do continuity testing. So let me go ahead and switch over to continuity testing. And this is when you want to check to see if you have. Uh, continuity through your circuit so when you touch these you get this audible beep and you can hear that and to check that we have this um, little circuit that I built this is a low pass filter if I remember correctly and I can just go ahead and check the center conductors of these and we have continuity through the circuit and then we also have continuity on the ground I'm assuming and we do and so that looks like it works. Um, the next one is a diode test. So give me one second. I'll be right back. Let me grab some diodes. Okay, so what we have here is a BAT85 Schottky diode, and we're going to do a test on this. But what I wanted to point out first is that when you put a multimeter in diode testing mode, what it does is it makes a forward voltage that comes out and goes back in. And then it measures the the delta and what's left over. So we'd use a diode like this when you need a lower voltage uh, input. So you can take a regular voltage, say like three and a quarter, and then you can drop it down to something else. So what I want to do is I just want to show you. So here's a second multimeter set up to measure DC voltage. And if I connect the leads from the two meters together, what you can see is, is that our output voltage is right at three and a quarter coming out of the GDVA. So let me go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay, and we're going to use the probes from the multimeter. And uh, these look like decent probes. They say max 10 amps on here, CE rating. I'm not sure um, how accurate that CE rating is, but uh, it's the same for, for both of these. All right, anyhow, so we have our, our diode. And we want to connect this up here and we want to connect this up here. And then you can see the forward voltage on the diode is uh, 0.3. So we were at three and a quarter. So that uh, means that this diode is, is dropping down about 2.9 volts. And so that looks like it tested out okay. The next thing we have on here is microvolts. And so let's switch over to microvolts and um, I don't think I've got anything that would measure microvolts. All right, so to measure this, what we have here is our NANG AN8008 multimeter, and it's generating 50 hertz. And so let me go ahead and put this in here like so. And then what you can see down here is we get a 50 hertz reading at 50% because this is doing a square wave. So that's what you would expect to see there. Um, I can increase this and then that is at 400 and you can see that it adjusts accordingly down <clears> here. <throat> okay, the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to hit the function button and we're going to move over to capacitance. Um, and hopefully you can see that okay. And what this will allow us to do is measure capacitance. <laughs> Makes sense, right? So here is our DMM check plus. And when I come up here, and I believe I have to go this way. This should be one microfarad. And we have 1.078. This should be 0.1 microfarad. And it's re rendering in nanofarads, which is okay. And we look like we're good there. We passed that test. 
All right, the next thing we have on here is temperature. And we are in Fahrenheit and it's saying it's 70 degrees down here. Let's get our thermocouple and just test this out. All right, according to the thermocouple, it's 67.4. And uh, that might make sense. And so we're just going to take the end of this and just hold it in our hand. And then you can see it starting to go up. And it looks like we have a Celsius and a Fahrenheit reading here, which is cool. All right, the next thing we have on here is non-contact voltage. And so let's go ahead and see if that detects anything here. And it is definitely, let's see if it clamp it. It's definitely reading uh, that there's a non-contact voltage there. And one thing I, I want to mention about non-contact voltage is it's an indicator. It's not an absolute. I would not trust a non-contact voltage reading if it said that there was not voltage. I would still do my due diligence to make sure it's there. Um, that goes through with these different settings. So I want to talk about some of the other buttons. So if you take a look on the side here, um, it has an H and it has a flashlight. And when you hit the flashlight, what it will do is turn turn the flashlight on. You have to do a long press and then a long press to turn it off. Now, what the H will do is it will hold a value. So let's go back over to voltage, for example, and let me go ahead and connect this. This might not be the best example in the world, but uh, we're going to use it anyway. And if I come over to my, my meter here and I do a reading, uh, let me switch this to AC. So there we have a voltage reading of 4959. Uh, and then I can hit this button and it puts that H down on the screen and it will hold that value. So I can take a measurement, walk away, take the meter with me, go write something down, um, and I can do that. It also has this max min uh, button. And what you can do is you can use that to highlight max. And then when you do a reading, if you're dialing something in, it will hold the max reading for you. Um, and the min will give you the lowest reading that you had there. The other thing I was going to talk about was that it has this... Um, inrush capability. Let me go back to amps. And I have to hold this in. Oh. And when I hit that button, I get this inrush on here. And what that will do is, is that if I connect this up to an AC or DC circuit, and I, and I start a motor, for example, um, that's powered off of that, I typically will get a startup flood of, of um, current, and what this will do is this will hold that peak value and let you know what that is. This is particularly handy for putting like on a car battery, for example, um, to find out what, your, what the um, starting draw is. All right, folks, and I'll include this link below, but here is the website where you can purchase this particular meter. It's off of Valley Express, and it's currently at $28.99 with free shipping, which isn't bad. And then you can check this out. Um, it goes over some more of the specs or the technical details of the meter. Um, it has all these wonderful pictures of the meter, and it tells you all these wonderful things that it can do. But uh, I just wanted to include this so you would have it in the event that you wanted to look it up. So folks, that's going to wrap it up. This is a budget multimeter and it would be used mostly, you would get something like this if you wanted to measure current through a cable, uh, which is a pretty handy thing if you mess around with solar panels or, or um, batteries or you're doing testing current in your car or something like that. Um, pretty handy here. This is more of like an electrician's tool, not an electronics tool. Um, it would be a handy addition to your your ham shack or to your to your workbench or something like that. Um, and the price is definitely hard to beat. Uh, that's really all I have to say about it. I want to thank everybody for watching. And I want to thank GVDA for sending this meter to me for my consideration. Thanks again, everybody. Totally appreciate it.